Let's check out the tail of the tape in the Cole main event. Very simply put, you, you look at the records are somewhat similar, height the same, weight's the same, reach is close to the same. 27 years of age for Pedro Carvalho. It's just coming into his own. Jeremy Kennedy's right there at 30. Bellator MMA presents live on Showtime tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner at 5 foot 11 weighing in 146 pounds even ranked at number five he holds a professional record including 18 wins three losses from surrey british columbia canada he fights out of las vegas nevada usa jeremy jbc kennedy And across the cage, his adversary fights out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 145.4 pounds, currently ranked at number three. The former world title challenger brings 13 professional victories, six defeats. Originally from uh, Guimanaes, Portugal, he fights now out of Dublin, Ireland, introducing the game, Pedro Carvalho. In charge of the action, your referee, Keith Peterson. So are you ready? So are you ready? Fight! High, high stakes in the Colbert event. Very high stakes right now. This is a very important fight for both individuals. Major, one, Carvalho, John, a notoriously slow starter. He can't be tonight. Absolutely, and that's one of the things I was going to just talk about is Jeremy Kennedy needs to establish. Pedro likes to come forward, and when he comes forward, he is on fire. And he needs to make sure that Pedro has a hard time stepping forward. Every time Pedro comes forward with something, he needs to respond, react, and hit him with a good shot. Both fighters have this in common. They had a very high profile loss at a young age to one of the best fighters in the world. That's a good kick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Carvalho got that one in. Carvalho's, of course, came to Patricio Pitbull, a fight he said he was just not ready for. Meanwhile, he had seen early in the round, not a lot of sweat. Not, you see him trying to force that to the inside there. That's why Jeremy put it down right at that point. That made it a little tight, though. You need to be careful when you're doing that. He's got his head a little bit to the side, I can see. That's tight, though. It's not that it's to the point where it's going to choke him out at this moment, but he's got to work his way through it. Jeremy Ken had to be coached to go for the hand, to break up the grip. So, Carvalho's came to Patricio Pitbull. Jeremy Kennedy flew halfway across the world in a fight I talked to him about, and he was just not ready for in terms of preparation, all the things that go into a world travel fight week, especially when Alexander Volkanovsky is the guy on the other side of the cage. Yeah, and you know, it's again, as a young fighter, it's it's the whole JVC thing. You think, you know, you can get away with things because, oh, I'm so good, I can eat those kind of things. You have to learn how to become a professional. Jeremy Kennedy now, he's a professional. He's had a lot of these road games. Right here in Pico, California. He's fought in Brazil. Volkanovski's fight was in Australia. This right here is a very important moment for Pedro Carvalho because if Jeremy Kennedy can control Pedro at this time while he's dry, but while he's fresh, the fight's only going to get worse for Pedro because Jeremy's going to feel confident. He's going to start coming forward more looking for the takedowns and putting Pedro back on the mat. So he's got to work at getting himself either in that position of using the cage to get himself back to the feet or get a reversal here. He went for the guillotine. That made it for an easy takedown. It didn't work out. Now he's got to get himself out of this predicament. His body of work for Jeremy Kennedy. And there is Patricky. Checking in, we talked about his help, and he was the he was the Queely whisperer to Bryce Logan. 
Leading up to that upset win we just saw. Nice lace of the right arm there of Pedro. You see him, Jeremy, he's got his right arm holding it, so he can open up with that left. Two hands under each chin, lift up his head. Body of work for Jeremy Kennedy. The different levels of experience throughout the globe, fighting top fighters. Three and one in the UFC, three and one in Bellator, went down to PFL for a while. Really paid off during this run. I know a lot of people sort of discredited the Pico fight because of the injury, but Jeremy Kennedy did his job. He did his job. I, you know, I, I hear people all the time, wow, you know, Aaron Pico got hurt. He did. But Jeremy Kennedy didn't do anything wrong. In fact, he went and won that fight. And that's just the way fighting goes sometimes. And Aaron Pico's going to be back. That featherweight title picture, especially, the big question is what does Patricio want to do here? Does he want to go down? And if so, when? And is there another title fight at 145? And is this the title eliminator here we're talking about right now? That could be. You just don't know because Patricio has talked about going down and fighting Sergio Pettis for that 135 pound bantamweight strap. He wants to be the first fighter in Bellator history to own three different weight divisions. Because it gets so much easier when you get older to lose weight, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy to think of Patricio Pitbull legacy shopping when his legacy is pretty darn good as it is. And again, borderline dominance here on the ground, which is what we expected from Jeremy Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy's had his way with this so far, so this is all looking good for Jeremy Kennedy right now. Uh, what does Pedro Carvalho have to do here in round two? He's got to stop the takedown. He's got to, if it's going to get into a battle, he needs to be the guy coming out in the top position. He is very good on the ground, but Jeremy Kennedy is outstanding there too. So in the stand-up, push Jeremy Kennedy back. When Jeremy is on his back foot, he doesn't throw. He starts to look and wait. So Pedro is normally a guy that puts a lot of pressure on his opponents. He's got to try to put that pressure on Jeremy right now. It's hard to argue he's not coming off the best performance of his career against Matt Burnell, but he hasn't been that guy to put a couple of two or three together. Yeah, you know, when he first came to, to Bellator, you know, his first fight was against a guy named Danny Crawford, who was an outstanding 10-1, I believe. Or no, sorry, 10-0 at the time that he fought Pedro. It was his first loss. And he's had some great wins against Sam Cecilia and guys like that. But that fight against Pedro, I mean, excuse me, against Patricio, he got knocked out. He came back too fast. In my opinion, I and I told him, I said, you're coming back too fast, you need more time off. And he had a bad performance against J.J. Wilson, and things started to go a little bit away from him. He's getting it back now, but this is going to be a tough fight. Colombian and realized, and we talked about this too, that he felt he had to get out of Canada to get to the higher level. It was part of the Volkanovski story that he thought he was fine training up there and he needed to upgrade. Again, these are a lot of the upgrades. This high level wrestling now takes the back. Nice body lock takedown by Jeremy Kennedy. Triangles it up. And it is, it has been that change. He's training at Extreme Couture. His coach, Eric Nixick, loves him as a, as a person that's always in the gym, always working hard, now great nutrition, always staying in shape. And he's working out with guys like Patchy Mix yep. and all these other guys. So he's got some studs around him, Aljamain Sterling. Mads Brunel, too, by the way, speaking of scouting yep. the guy that you're fighting. Pedro's very calm in this position. He's not really too worried about the choke. He knows he's got to control the hands. But he's got to get that foot just like he is to the ground. Now he can start to try to peel that leg and get himself out of there. 
That was nice work by Carvalho. That's why you're seeing Jeremy go to his hooks because he he knows Pedro likes to peel that foot. That's why he can't peel it now. Right? Look, he's trying to butt triangle, but he's got it back. Yeah, he, Pedro doesn't feel that he has that on his leg. He's trying to push that foot off. It's not working for him. The game within the game, on the game. It is. It's all little incremental things. And this this switch. Now the problem is if he brings the foot to the ground, he's putting himself into the cage. Not a lot of room to work with him. Improved defense from Pedro Carvalho, but he's coming he out lost, of this though. He lost nice the job. first. He lost the first round, and at some point, defense isn't going to help him. And this is one of those situations. If you're Jeremy Kennedy, and now you've been on the ground with him, you've gotten that figure four in his body, and you weren't able to even kind of attempt a good choke, then the next time you go there, it's time to start using strikes. I need to loosen him up, make him pay. Just grinding and grinding and grinding. Now, he's, he's, a couple of times he's put his head in a, not a great spot. There yep. he pops it out. See, this is a place now. Jeremy is very wise to all the attacks that Pedro can create, and he's just going to grind with his head, use his pressure to create problems for Pedro, and just try to use some strikes now, beat him up a little bit. Pedro's got to work at getting himself back to his feet. The knock on Pedro Carvalho over the years has been that he takes too many chances. And now he's put himself in a position where he's probably going to have to win round two. Absolutely. What a way to start this huge day on Showtime. Packed house at the Three Arena, the town that Pedro Carvalho now calls home. Born in Portugal, proud of Surrey, British Columbia. Little known Jeremy Kennedy fact, he was in the, and when the Vancouver Canucks lost the Stanley Cup in 2011 to the Bruins, and there were some riots, and Mick, Jeremy Kennedy was right in the middle of that. So he didn't do anything, but. Found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was at, I was actually there at that time. Oh, you know, listen, I believe when you say, hey, I've been to Dagestan and I've been to these places I've never heard of, I believe you. <laughs> you were ready. at the Stanley so Cup riot what? in Vancouver yes, in 2011. Because, yes, I was. <laughs> were you in the middle of it saying, let's get it on? No, I was not. <laughs> I was trying to get my butt out of there. <laughs> you're, you're Forrest Gump, man. You've been, you're like Thank in all you. these historic <laughs> moments. Stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> nice job by Pedro here. He's got to really open up and start going for this. He can't get into a, just a slow grinding game. If he believes that he can take Jeremy down and move to good positions and do damage, great. Nice job of stepping around. So he needs to be slick. Think about you know, tripping with the leg. Take one of your feet, put it behind the leg. You see Kennedy going for the Kimura there. Nice change of position. That happened so easy. Yep. Pedro's in on the same type of Kimura drift to try to change it back, but he doesn't have the same angle. Physically, he is very strong, able to pick up Carvalho when he wants, elevate him, get his feet off of the floor, and bring him right down to where he wants. And this is where I was talking. The last time he was trying for chokes, now you need to start opening up, 
Start using some strikes. Maybe that will open up the chin area and allow you to sink in that choke. Here they come. Carvalho holding on to those hands now. He's going for it. Seven minutes of ground control through the math. Out of 13 minutes of the fight, not even. Hard to think of a moment where this was not going the way Jeremy Kennedy wanted to go. Now this has been a clean sweep right now for Jeremy Kennedy. He's been able to control the fight where he wants, when he wants. He's never been in danger in this fight. He's just completely dominated the action for the most part with his grappling. You forget about prospects exploding on the scene at 22, 23. They have a high profile loss and then people tune away and they forget that they're still getting better and better and better. And it took Jeremy Kennedy maybe a longer path and a lot of different stops, but he has become the fighter at age 30 that a lot of people thought he was going to be seven, eight years ago. Absolutely, and that's really, you know, the, the story of it is everyone, as soon as you, you lose, they give up on you. It's, oh, he's not that good. There are so many good fighters out here, and all it takes is time, time and effort to get them to the point where they are now competing and they are so hard to beat. That's Jeremy Kennedy right now. The variety of competition, the variety of trainers, the variety of coaches in different locations. This is the night he has put it all together. Been dominant. And Jeremy is wa he's wanting to finish this. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's trying to do things, and he maybe should look. You can always, if you go back to the hooks. You can look towards sliding towards an arm bar, but not easy to do. And there's someone that knows what they're doing in defense. So to that body lock for two and a half, three minutes here in the third round. Trying to turn inside of that figure four. Unable to do it. This is what we talk. You gotta put that foot to the ground because that stops him from being able to squeeze completely and allows you to kind of turn yourself and push that leg away and get your shoulders flat on the ground. And Jeremy Kennedy comes to Dublin and pitches a perfect game. Michael C. Williams makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Sal D'Amato, Ben Carlidge, Brian Miner. I'll have it exactly the same at 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision. Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy. He's earned himself a junior bacon cheeseburger. Jeremy Kennedy, J.B.C. is with B.J.M. I'm, I'm here with Jeremy Kennedy. In fact, Sean Granny just said you just earned yourself a junior bacon cheeseburger. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a dominant win against the number three ranked guy in the featherweight division. Where do you think this now puts you? Man, I'm, I, I believe I've been number one the whole time. And I think this just proves it, you know. I wanted to come on here and make a statement. And uh, I don't make excuses. All day, all week, I've been feeling kind of sh shitty. You know, crapping my guts out, but... He's, he's a tough guy. He's a guy that you, he's going to be right in your face and active the whole time. And yeah, man, it's, it's a tiring style to fight, but uh, even on my worst day, I can 30-27 these guys, you know? So that's the statement I'm taking here is on my worst day fighting, I'm not happy with my performance, and that's the number three ranked guy, and I'm able to walk through and do that. I don't know where, where these, John, what are we going to do about these rankings, man? I keep beating these guys that are way ranked higher than me. So uh, I expect to 
You know, you keep what you kill, you eat what you kill. So I'm at least number three now. So who is it you should be fighting? Pitbull, you know, that's the, that's the fight. That's the only fight right now is that title fight. Pitbull, you better not be running down to 35. I'm the guy to fight. I'm the guy in this division. This is my division. I'm a dog walk up all around this cage. Big win. Congratulations, Jeremy Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen.